Hey, uh, welcome back to The Irrational, uh, the podcast where we discuss various pieces of media and the fears that they've instilled in us. Uh, first, I want to apologize for missing an episode last week. Uh, turns out this hitchhiking to New York thing is a little more difficult than anticipated. In fact, I'm currently hiding in the woods right now from a biker gang. What happened was I had seen their bar and I thought maybe I'd ask them if I could use their Wi-Fi. And they were very offended by me implying that they would have Wi-Fi. So now I'm on the run, um, but things will be okay. Um, I'm sure they'll give up pretty soon. So anywho, um, this week's episode is my good friend Connor Delahanty. We met in the open mic scene in Chicago and came up together and then he moved off to New York about a year ago, so I'm really looking forward to hanging out with him if I, uh, I mean, when I, when I get there. Um, we have a great conversation about uh, how he saw the movie Jarhead, Too Young, and how a movie like that can provide you with emotional baggage that you've never personally experienced. As always, we plug everything at the end of the episode, so without further ado, Connor Delahanty. So your fear came from the movie Jarhead, which is a wh- how how old do you th- I should have looked this up before? Um, it's probably like ten, twelve years old. Maybe. Yeah, I want to say. I think I like. Got dropped off to the movie when I saw it, so I think maybe I was like fourteen, fifteen. Okay. So yeah, like about a decade old. Um. But yeah, it was about like Marines. Um and. So, like, I think, like, the first half is about the war, and then the second half is just kind of about, like, trying to reacclimate into society after kind of, like, PTSD stuff. Oh, wow. Um, It was a pretty heavy movie. I think going into it, I thought it was just going to be, like, a cool war movie, because I was at that yeah. point where I was, like, blood's awesome. Yeah. And I just liked seeing, you know, a whole lot of bang, bang, bang shit. But it was, um like, pretty deep in tone and stuff. Yeah, the trailer made it look a little... um sensationalized like you could tell it looked it was uh it seemed more deep than most movies or mm-hmm. about like that similar subject but um i had no idea that it touched on going back into like civilian life i think that's what it was about i yeah. could be remembering totally wrong because i didn't want to i didn't want to see it again sure <laughs> <laughs> so what was the scene that really set it off that so really bothered you so it's just one scene and it's midway through the movie and it's just a bunch of the guys they're just like in the mess hall um or whatever like the common room and one of the guys gets um in the package he gets a package from his wife and there's a vhs tape of the movie deer hunter okay. so yeah, this had to have been a, a conflict in the 90s so um it's a vhs deer hunter so everybody's like oh great we can watch deer hunter we love this movie so then they're watching it and uh, like halfway through it switches and it goes it, it cuts from a scene in deer hunter to his wife had filmed herself cheating on him with their neighbor and so then just in front of all these people this guy real so at first someone just goes yeah because they just think it's porn yeah and then he stands up and he's like that's my wife and he's like that's my neighbor and then at the end of the 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 clip that she had filmed she like walks up to the uh she walks up to the camera and she's like who's like who's fucking around now i think that's what she says so then she turns it off or and then that's like the end of the thing and then does it go back to deer hunter (laughs) no that's just the end of the video and then or no i think that's so that's a brutal scene yeah and i just like because i wasn't expecting it at all um and the thing is, like, the more that I think about it, because I hadn't thought about it for a while until like, you asked me to do this, and I was kind of, like, trying to reanalyze it. Like, this character, really, you didn't know anything about him. He maybe yeah. had a line here or there, but you didn't know if he was a good guy or not or whatever. And that line when she says, like, who's fucking around now? Like, maybe he was doing something, too, but that... So, basically, that scene, I've been terrified of being cheated on, like, ever since. Really? Like like a very very bad fear and it's not and like to be honest charlie i don't 
I haven't even really fucking dated anybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, like in any co- uh, committed capacity to where you would feel like you could get cheated on? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like never really. Um, Do you think that's a result of that? Maybe. I think it's probably like a combination of, of many things like that that I'm afraid of. But there was a while when whenever I would first start to like either date a girl or like a girl or wherever that that like affection was starting i would just go through images of like oh well sh- like oh she's just gonna leave me for like all my best friends and yeah then, so just like i went through all my friends like oh she's gonna leave me for greg joe david ross like oh, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why wow <laughs> that's scarring uh, <laughs> that's not what i expected when you brought up jarhead no yeah that's <laughs> um, i thought it was gonna be like i was afraid of getting drafted um no because like it's a very small part in the movie and doesn't really it's never like revisited at yeah. all because who's the character is that it's not jake gyllenhaal's character it's no it's not character? jake gyllenhaal it's just kind of like um a secondary character maybe um you know like he's someone who probably like had a name but not a lot of lines sure um but yeah, that like totally fucked me up. I remember like <laughs> feeling like sick in the theater and I I don't even think I was like paying attention the rest of the movie and I was just like Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, that good. could uh if it, you know, is if, I, in not being explored, it just like they have this horrifying moment of like betrayal and embarrassment and then they just move on from that and go back into like the regular Yeah, and it's story. It's, it's kind of like left mostly up to your imagination of like what kind of person this guy is like what um like, like what situation his marriage was in and, and all that stuff which right. i mean like did che- he deserve it did he not deserve yeah, it like cheating's wrong i think in a vacuum but like you don't know what kind of marriage they had sure um but <laughs> so i think in that like the way i painted it was i was like oh this guy's just a, s- a soldier trying to to do everything right for his country and then even at that point i think because when i was younger i considered like the marines specifically for a while so i think i kind of i was like well like if you're a marine you're a good person you're great so it's just like i pictured as this guy doing everything right but he still got screwed over and i think that's kind of the way i painted it in my head um so it's like even if you're a good guy like you can still get cheated on <laughs> and embarrassed God. which i think is true but yeah it is true, but <laughs> you'd you'd expect if you were a good person to not have it thrown in your face like that. But yeah. that's also not necessarily the way life plans out or pans out, because like anybody could be f- f- fucking crazy like that. Yeah, and anybody can, like especially relationship wise. Even if you're a good person, you can decide to be with the wrong kind of person. Yeah, um, I've been in relationships where. I, I've never cheated on anybody. Like, you know, believe it or don't. But <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I've believe been. It, Charlie. I'm not, I'm not gonna <laughs> try and out you. <laughs> no, I'm just saying because, like, of course, anybody would make those claims. But like, I, I never have, and I've been in relationships where the other person was so suspicious of me to the point where, like, I have been accused of it. That I was like you're cheating on me, right? Like, th- how are you thinking about cheating this often if you're not cheating on me? Yeah, that's You know what, what I mean? That's what, like, everybody says. that, And they think it's, like, the flaws you see in yourself you kind of try to project onto the other person. Yeah. Whatever they may be. Um, but, yeah, I, like, and even, I just don't know how, like, some people overcome it. Like, I'm sure... If I was in that s- scenario, I'd be able to overcome it. It'd be difficult, but I'd be fine. Mm-hmm. It's just a thing where, like, like when you think about family members you love, you're like, oh, I don't know what I'd do without them. But you know that, like, when they pass away, you'll you'll deal with it. You'll f- you'll find a way. You'll you'll still keep being a person after that. Yeah. And you'll be able to uh, be close to people again. But like, like I remember one time, I like you know, like our mutual friend Alex Stone. Yeah. He, like, he found out his girlfriend cheated on him. Like habitually a ton and oh like, yeah he's got that joke about yeah it. i'm like how do you and he's i don't know he just soldiered on yeah i guess and you it do sucked for a while you live and then eventually you're like well i can't <laughs> let this become my personality mm-hmm. or you do and then those people are just very frustrating and uh 
unhappy the rest of their lives. Yeah. But see, now that makes it sound like I'm shitting on people who are traumatized by a terrible <laughs> experience. Yeah, that's how not dare what you? I'm doing. I just mean like it is kind of a bummer when you see someone like uh, one experience uh, then forms their entire worldview. That's intense, mm-hmm. though. Um, I don't know. So like, do do you think that has strongly affected your dating life? Um, I think I think it's I think it's part of a uh, a lot of different things, but in the same kind of family. Like, um, I think my dating life is probably just like in simple terms that like that dumb thing of like oh you can't love someone else until you love yourself but not that i i don't necessarily like myself or anything like that but just i would whenever a girl would um start liking me or show affection to me i would like never believe her okay i'd be like this why no you wouldn't like me (laughs) and then why then if it's not that (laughs) then it's like uh (laughs) <laughs> then if it's not that then it's like oh well wait you like me you're fucking stupid i can't like someone who's this stupid <laughs> like <laughs> okay I'm, I'm an idiot in that sense this is this is a little nuts <laughs> i understand like <laughs> not i understand um skewed perceptions and um what's it called um cognitive distortions mm-hmm. and you know getting down on yourself um especially as entertainers but you are like six five you're very handsome you're very kind and you're funny what like and you just can't fathom somebody liking you yeah i guess i think it's partially because for like the first 15 uh, first like 16 years of my life um like i was terribly obese like very fat okay yeah. i think like that's the that's the physical part of it yeah because i mean until the time that physical part really sticks with you mentally yeah i then and up until the past maybe like two or three years i i'd still like like every time i would eat something it was just like ah this is gonna this is gonna make me super fat again like yeah everything no matter what it was but um i think it's part of that and then I i don't know i guess I have a I have a withholding mother emotionally. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't need to. We don't. I don't <laughs> want to like we, if we dig get super really deep. Into Unless you want to, I don't give a shit. But I'm saying, like, I'm not trying to unpack like all of your uh, various dating issues. I'm mm-hmm. just like, I don't know, because like I feel like that could be that fear could really uh, manifest itself in putting up like a lot of different walls and stuff. Ooh, I got I got so many walls. Oh yeah. <laughs> Trump Trump should talk to me. You want a <laughs> you want a wall that'll that'll stick around? <laughs> I got tons of them. Talk to <laughs> they're Mrs. All just n- they're all just named after different women. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um <laughs> I feel like let's see, because like I, I'm uh definitely prone uh to baggage. Like I cling to things that uh aren't always from previous relationships some of them uh, mo- most of them are from like just external like but a lot of them are from consuming media um and like i'll have these weird um i don't know like binary guidelines and stuff that i feel like people should fit that aren't accurate to mm-hmm. real people and then uh it's really skewed my i don't know my perception of the way a relationship should be and then i just get in huge fights like only within the past like five years have i grown as a person in regards to like dating and stuff because i'm slowly just unpacking all this baggage and like realizing that nobody fits into any neat little box you know and i feel like something like that at a young age would have freaked me out to the point where i might have stayed distant from people like i i would push people away to make sure that they could never get that close to hurt me Oh yeah, I've, <laughs> I've done a whole lot of that. <laughs> just, uh, just stiff, stiff arming them out of my life. Get a, get away. Yeah. Why do you think I'm so quiet? <laughs> <laughs> you are very quiet. I was when I asked you to do this. I was like, "Is he gonna talk? Like, am I gonna, is it gonna be only me talking?" Which this podcast <laughs> is a lot of me talking. Uh, no, I man. Once I get that. into it, I'm, uh, I'm I'm just bad at finding an in because it's like. I mean, just like earlier, where it's like we start with one thing, and then I'm like, my mom. Like, <laughs> like it, that's just not the kind of relationship we have. It's, it's good. Funny. I don't want to. I don't want to be 
get on here and be like she's a shit woman but yeah so is is there any chance she could hear this <sighs> or someone that knows her well enough to tell her i don't know her her uh her boyfriend's very tech savvy Ooh. so he like he might give it a listen and then which i mean if you're listening mom i've said most of this to you so it's all good okay i could cut it if need be no nah, i don't care um <laughs> have you ever um it's like with the fear of cheating have you ever considered going like the exact opposite and, and cheated on someone. <laughs> no. Well, okay, that's a good. Let's <laughs> let's go there. Do you if and if you don't want to talk about that, that's fine. No, I mean I've like. So I've. I've never been in like. I guess a relationship where I would like introduce the girl as like my girlfriend or I don't know. I've just been so many like weird on and off things. Okay. Like, um. Like, we date for a month, and then we stop for whatever reason. Like, usually, I, like the girls I get very attracted to are uh, emotionally unavailable girls. And so then we'll start dating, and then, but then she'll be like, uh, I can't do this. I'm not in a good emotional space. And then I'm like, that's cool. I'll give you your time. And then, but then I just kind of, like, I always come back because I'm, like, just so infatuated. So, like, I've never even really had the option to cheat i guess Uh, well like the last girl i i like dated kind of in that way one time when we were i guess technically on but like i could tell like i was out of town and then she pretty much like just stopped responding to me so i was like oh well she doesn't want to be with me anymore whatever so like when i was on that trip i like I made out with a girl. And then when I got back, I told her and we were both like, what are we doing? This is dumb. Like, yeah. Um, well, that is a complicated cause it's like, if it's that up in the air, is it cheating? Because if you're just dating someone and you're not like official, mm-hmm. if you're not exclusive <laughs> with someone, <laughs> then c- you can, you really cheat because you're not like in a, a together in an official capacity yeah i mean if there are no rules then there are no rules to break yeah exactly and um, then if someone is if like if my girlfriend of like four years wasn't responding to me throughout the weekend i'd think we're in a fight but if i were on and off with someone like or like getting to like starting to date someone and they didn't respond to me to a whole for a whole weekend i would assume oh they don't they aren't interested anymore i'm still on the market Mm -hmm. you know and when i like when we had that conversation i don't even know how i phrased it but like she she was totally cool about it she was like no that makes sense she was like you you were probably angry at me because i was pulling away and i was like yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) he's like no it's whatever i'm like we're still friends yeah it's not a big deal um um but what i was gonna ask earlier have you ever considered um, polyamory? Because then you couldn't really be cheated on because the door is always open. Have you ever looked into that? I've never... Th- I've never... Th- actually, I don't know if I've ever thought about doing that because there... I don't know if I could do that. But the I don't think I could. I think I'm wh- too jealous of a person. For a while, I kind of like looked down upon it. I don't know why because I just didn't know... I just, I guess I just didn't really understand it, but then I just met a couple people who were polyamorous, and I'm like, oh, there's, like, everybody knows what's going on, like, it's not, it's, I don't know, it's not sneaky at all or anything. Yeah. It's just, um... It's always weird when I have known people who aren't poly, and they date someone who turns out to be poly, but they weren't upfront about it, and that's not okay. (laughs) <laughs> like yeah it's you you, all, you have to know but if if like two people are in a polyamorous relationship and they're both aware of what's going on mm-hmm. uh, it's totally fine just like i mean like that conversation needs to be had the same way if you're seeing someone and you want it to be exclusive like talk about it. yeah bring it up like be like hey this is what i want out of this whether it be i want to be with just you or i want to be with a whole lot of people or hey don't call me anymore mm-hmm. you know because it is, it is super important because if you 
what so the fear is based in they're going to be upset by this news and they are going to leave me but if they're upset by that news which is very important news then you should just let them leave you like it, they shouldn't be a part of your life yeah because it's just that easy way out of being like well if i don't tell them today or bring it up today we can we can have a nice night tonight uh-huh but you think that but then still whatever it is it's just in the back of your head the whole time mm-hmm. um but also i don't i don't know what i'm talking about yeah i mean i don't really know what i'm talking about most of the time but you're you're in a successful relationship you know yeah you know how this game works i'm just over here it's fucking swiping on my phone getting drunk in bars well i'm also sometimes i wonder if i'm unhealthy and that i am i'm definitely a serial monogamist like if i date you if i t- go out on one date with you we're gonna be together for like at least two years <laughs> like i date people so i've never really experienced the dating life of just going out and dating around it have you b- but have you been on like first dates and then not a second date with a person but like or like every person not really i so uh-huh. like in um in high school my first relationship was a friends with benefits type of situation which everyone yeah, yeah that's how most people respond uh Until you get crushed and it sucked it sucked so bad it was like i i was like head over heels and then it you know it wasn't anything serious and that sucked after that um i, I mean i technically dated some like i technically had a girlfriend you know in like fuck junior high probably but that i don't count that you know it's like oh my mom dropped us off at the football game and then we held hands during it and then (laughs) my mom picked me up and we who who won the game kiss that night i don't know i was too busy holding hands uh (laughs) but so like i don't even count that relationship but so after the friends with benefits situation i was single until i was 20 maybe and anything in between that was like the very, very few and far in between ca- uh, occasional hookup, but nothing was ever like a date. So mm-hmm. I'd never taken a girl on a first date and then it not work out, which sounds weird and cocky, but I think it's just... But that's great. I don't know that it's... Th- I don't know that it's great because I feel like sometimes I just... Uh, I really like a lot of aspects about a person and then I just cling to those aspects and I ignore a lot of negative things. And then I just well, were date you them for a very long time. So you were in relationships that were that went on too long. I have been, yeah. Which and it's no in in no way am I like blaming the other person or even myself. It's just two different people that didn't really that shouldn't have really been together, you know. Yeah, like yeah. that's fine. We yeah, c- sometimes we the equation just doesn't work yeah. out. Which is because like I just I don't know I I always pretty frustrated with people like that hate every single one of their exes because i'm like if you hate every one of your exes like do you think maybe it's you like full-on hate you know what i mean yeah like yeah i know some people just like or people who are like no you can't talk to your ex at all as what what you don't yeah you can yeah that person was like the most important person in your life for like you have people who like, let's say you saw whoever it was, like, whoever was, like, your best friend when you were, like, 14. Like, if you ran into them now, you'd probably be happy. Mm-hmm. Like, like, yeah, they're a different person, but they were very important to you for a period of time. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm friends with, yeah, I'm friends with all people uh, I've dated. Or I'm at least friendly, you know, maybe not in contact, but. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm friends um i'm certainly not enemies with any of my exes um but like i've any of one of them i can look at them and be like no they're a good person there's a reason why i was with them in the first place but we just weren't meant for each other and that's why we broke up but like i don't know i still feel like sometimes me being a serial monogamous is like detrimental and that i will ignore signs that a relationship should end you know what I mean? And then I'll just keep it going. Mm-hmm. But is that really like serial? Does that have to do with monogamy or just not wanting to deal with like an issue or? I feel like the serial monogamy is the umbrella mm-hmm. that could be caused by several different 
little things and my big thing is not dealing with issues yeah. well i mean let me tell you the dating world you're not missing much <laughs> as everyone it 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 can seem like a blast and it can also seem like for the most part it seems like a total nightmare which i don't know i don't know it's like since i've been i've been here in new york a year and i've dated so much more than probably more than i dated like the rest of my life just in this one year and really it's all been fun they've been and i've never like i've never had a bad time yeah. on a first date I've had times where I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I'll see this person again, but it's still, whatever, nice conversation. I don't know. It's just not. After a while, it gets very unfulfilling. Okay. Where it's like, yeah, the first couple of times where it was like, it's like, oh, like, like you kiss a girl at the end of a first date, and it's like that feels great, that feels cool, but then. I don't want to sound like a fucking misogynist, but it's like, yeah, I kiss all these fucking girls, but it's <laughs> like. Um. Yeah. After a while, it's just kind of like, why, why, why can't I connect? Why am I a robot? Sure. Um, it's at least what I think. Um. Yeah. I guess like the unfulfilling aspect of it, I guess, is an important thing that you that doesn't stand out right away. It's like um, like uh, being unemployed. You're like, I've got all this free time. Like, I can go out with my friends every night. I can drink. I can. Like, I don't have to wake up and go to this job. I can, like, I'm going to work on my craft. I'm going to write a bunch of jokes or paint a picture or something mm-hmm. like that. And then after, like, a week of that, you're immediately just like, this sucks. I need something to do with my time. I hate th- that I'm unemployed. I, like, you start sleeping until, like, 2 p.m. Like, yeah, I, g- I guess I, c- I could see that being very fun at first, but then in the long term, unfulfilling. Well, and it's hard because it's, like, you get to a point where, like right now like i would like to be in like it's a serious relationship i would i would like to do that i think um i don't know i I would like to see what that's like i think it would it'd be a great thing for me to grow and just kind of go into that sort of uncharted territory for myself um but then it's like Oh well, how do I do that? It's like, well, I gotta go on. I gotta go on dates. I gotta like. Yeah, you gotta like find the person to do like that with. I gotta find that person, but then it's like, what? But I'm tired of dates. I don't know. How's uh? So what? Do you, you're you're on Tinder. That's what you your main uh. My main one is Bumble. Bumble. Oh, Bumble is Tinder, but the women have but to the message but first. But the gal messages first. Yeah, that's a good uh. That's a good idea. I mean. Yeah, it's good. I can't imagine it's. I feel like. W- uh just the idea of that weeds out a decent amount of shitty dudes Mm -hmm. but i still feel like that doesn't really solve anything because a shitty dude who waits for the first message can still respond with his his terrible terrible (laughs) terrible message uh but i guess just the general concept of it would weed out some of the riffraff because like some you get some men's right activists who's like who hears of it and they're like oh fuck that like why am i not allowed to message first and then they don't even sign up and really that's the battle you pick when wait <laughs> but that's what i'm saying yeah. if someone would pick that battle then they're it's good to weed them out right at the top yeah get them off that app yeah but um how is it like is it fun like i to me it feels like combining a game with dating which are two different thrilling things I just feel like that could get very, like, addicting. No, I think it's, I mean, it definitely does get addicting just just doing it on your phone. Like, that's, because, yeah, to me, it's just kind of like, it's just like another thing to do on your phone. And it's yeah. just like, there's always another one. There's always the next one. And it's it's kind of like the the Netflix kind of, like, conundrum where there's so many options. Yeah. It, like, and it's. And I know peop these women are more than movies. They're they're individuals with a lot of character and stuff. But it's <laughs> still it's like I don't know them yet, so it's all just like Yeah. This oh, is maybe. real emotions. And both men and women alike, I'm sure, have come across this exact because it is like the concept is you're trying to find someone. You can't if you message every single person you're into, you've got a lot to keep track of. You're not gonna give anybody the right amount of attention. That's unfair to both of you uh but it is like you're based on so little 
uh, mostly superficial information, how do you make a choice who to cut? You yeah. know, because what if you're like ignoring someone that you would have had a deep, meaningful connection with if you actually got together just because this person happened to mention one of your favorite books? Yeah, and, and then, then now like, you're. Yeah, but, but this one lives closer. So <laughs> maybe <laughs> it's just like all these different factors. Uh huh. It's like if I only got Thursday night free, then I can only go on one date. <laughs> Shit, I I have known people. I think the highest number I've ever heard of for like Tinder dating was three in one night, which blew my mind. It was more like a daytime, early afternoon than night, but still three in a day. Could you imagine that? Are they all just like hookups? Uh, I don't think I don't think it was hookups. Cause I don't think any of them were sexual. I think it was like first dates. Because the thing with me, like, I couldn't do that because I, uh, I don't know. I like talking on a first date. Like, a lot of times on a first date, we talk for, like, hours. Yeah. And um, I know it seems hard with me, but, you know, once I, <laughs> once <laughs> once I get, get going. Once I get going and I'm. You move past bring up your mom. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't bring up my mom or my family. I say, I have two brothers and that's all you're getting <laughs> out of me. <laughs> but. Yeah, I couldn't imagine being like, well, going on a date with this girl, but I only have an hour and a half. I always like to leave it open-ended. Yeah, I wouldn't like to have a um, <clears throat> a hard out for a date, because that would be a weird pressure. It would be like a weird pressure where it's like, I have to get in all of the meaningful conversation before this is up, and then I wouldn't be able to think of anything interesting to talk about. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we had all night, and the night could end in 20 minutes or the night could end in four hours. You know, that's just, I'm going to have like a way better conversation then. Yeah. Cause like, especially if it's a night, like you could, if you're not having a good time, you could always make up an out. Oh yeah. Or just say, I want to go home and just being an honest person. But usually it's like, Oh, I'm going to work or no, uh, I got kids or I don't know. basically <laughs> any parameters on a conversation freezes me up. Like if I'm say I'm in um, if I'm in a conversation with somebody at a party, I uh, similar I have an out I can walk away I can uh, be like oh I need to go get a drink or something like that. Say I'm uh, someone that I'm like friends with that I have had a conversation with before not like best friends but like someone I'm comfortable with to the point where like I will chat with them. Say we have to do a like drive somewhere and it's like a forty five minute drive. Knowing that we have to be in the car for 45 minutes, my brain shuts down. So, like, any limitations on a date, if, like, I knew exactly, like, the time frame, I would freeze up. Yeah, man. When you're in just a car with someone you know, like, decently, but not to a that's, that's rough for me. Because, mm -hmm. ooh, Delahanty don't like to talk. <laughs> it's so much better even with if there's just a third person, even if it's still silent. That makes me s feel so much better. Absolutely. Because then it's, it's a group think to not talk. Yeah. Instead of, am I so awkward that I'm, like, canceling out any conversation that we could potentially be having? Like, I've had times like that. Because like I used to, um, to the comedy club in Bloomington, I used to, like, pick people up from the airport sometimes and, like, um, drive people to radio. So it would just be me and... Uh, this comedian who I don't know yeah. at all, and for the most part, I I look up to them. Yeah, I like get someone I respect, um, and so it would just be like super stressful. I'd be like, well, should I talk? And blah, blah blah. But then I would I would rationalize it to myself like, oh well, well well they're not saying anything either, so I don't have to say anything. Yeah, like they're doing just as much as me, so we're equal. <laughs> like I would just have to like find a fucking roundabout way to calm myself down yeah i uh i have to remind myself of a lot of stuff like that too because it is like you're not the only one not talking mm -hmm. it's not like they keep trying to talk and you're giving them like one word answers and shutting down conversation again it's just like if it's quiet it's quiet and they either are going through the same thing that you're going through so you have like this kindred moment or they don't give a fuck and then you shouldn't give a fuck if they don't care. Yeah. I but think that's it still eats me up inside. I'm going to sell a t-shirt that says that you're, you're not the only one not talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so fuck what were we gonna w- i wanted to bring it back so you said you don't think you could ever do uh poly i don't think i'd ever be poly and that's just that's just too much scheduling i couldn't <laughs> yeah i don't think it's i don't think it's like what's your what's your idea of polyamorous well no like what see like uh, like having like the same amount of people in like one town i don't know if i could do that i don't know that it's i feel like um obviously and also i just don't know how people do like the frequency of you seeing people and I what think new I, people well no like like do you do you see each of the people you're dating like like once a month or once or twice a month or is there a main person and i'm sure it's uh i'm sure it's unique to each situation but i just i don't know yeah and i don't think i do because i don't even like because like when i when i like a girl i'm like all in and all other girls are rubbish that's how i am yeah and like i don't i don't even like to uh like if i'm just kind of dating a girl um like like let's say we've been on like three dates we're still talking but then i meet another girl that i want to go on like a first date with i won't i won't have any overlap okay I would what so like you would cut off mm-hmm. the first before the i would be like hey i don't i don't see this going anywhere serious i i'm just kind of or or ghost them i don't know i've done both i'm yeah. not a good guy um <laughs> No one said you were. Um, I literally did on this podcast earlier. <laughs> uh, the I don't want people spreading that word. I'm a bad boy. I feel like with I'm a maverick. Polly, I feel like it's less. Um, I mean, it all depends. Obviously, it's a very broad concept, but there's like um, a lot of what I've heard of it is you kind of do have your main stay, like your main mm-hmm. person where you like you two are the most official out of everyone that you're with. And then you do have other people, but those other people are kind of more other cities. So, like, if you're bound... Because, like, I've mostly heard comedians talk about it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So, like, I'm not... Um, I have a pretty skewed perception of what it is. But, like, when they go to, like, their other city, they have... It's not just, like, oh, I can fuck anybody I want because I'm polyamorous. It's, like, they also have someone in that city that they're, like, hey, I'm coming to town. Do you want to hang out all weekend? And they actually do hang out and are affectionate and stuff. It's not just, like, a hookup-based thing. And then, like, that's the best, um, or not the best version, but that's, like, the most common version that I personally know. Mm -hmm. And then there's also, like, um, because Mike Kaplan, he's polyamorous, and I've heard him talk about that on podcasts, and he had, like, one of the best arguments for it that I've ever heard was, like, um people in relationships just as people you meet a new person and you like if they are attractive to you and like their personality is like attractive you can like quickly fall for them and then you start like wondering like am i with the right person you start like doubting and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and if you're poly and it's like the the doors are open you can approach them in a way where it's like hey do you want to have like some kind of romantic tryst and then you get to know them and then you realize like this was just uh the instant like honeymoon puppy puppy love phase and it's absolutely not worth throwing away my relationship for and And then he can quickly get over people and and kind of like validate like oh i really do love my wife girlfriend exactly because you realize like oh this person that i had these huge feelings for all of a sudden they don't even compare to the person that i'm consistently in love with and like that's his argument for it which is like, like I said, it's like, I think that's a great argument for it. I still don't think I could do it. I'm, I don't know, a pretty jealous person. I just don't think I could handle it really. Um, and also similar to you where it's like with, when I'm with someone, I don't really have eyes for anybody else. Um, but then also I haven't been with anybody long enough where like to have that experience, you might grow tired of them. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I do in that situation. Um, I think, I think it'll definitely become more commonplace as the years go on because i mean it makes sense we're we're dumb animals that just want to fuck yeah and we're slowly learning about ourselves (laughs) about how dumb we are exactly yeah we're so dumb (laughs) um so it's like yeah of course the monogamy's crazy um (laughs) 
but for, I still believe in it, I guess. I don't yeah. know. We're one of very, very few animals that do it. It's like us and lobsters and maybe penguins. Lobsters do? Types of penguins. I think lobsters do. I might just be... And they live super long. That's crazy. I think I learned like that I would from understand the show like Friends, so it might be wrong. I would understand like a fly because they're only around for a day, so it's like we might as well. Yeah, I guess flies technically do it, but they just die really quickly. Yeah, that's really not monogamy by choice. <laughs> <laughs> Praying mantis, I guess. Yeah, because you're dead. <laughs> so, I don't know. I th- We got pretty far off from the initial topic of uh, Jarhead, but uh, <laughs> I feel like we've explored <laughs> these uh, weird insecurities pretty deeply. <laughs> Did you have uh, anything else that you wanted to talk about with this? Oh, you know, gosh, there's so much. You know, now that we open the box, it's yeah. like I, I talk once a month. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> Connor's big talk. <laughs> this is my big talk for the month. Um, <laughs> and if you're, uh, if you're polyamorous and you're listening and you want to, you want to tell me what your lifestyles are like, um, just, just email, email me. I'm curious the different ways people <laughs> go about it. What's your email? Uh, it's Connor Delahanty at gmail.com. It's just cool. my full name. Let's see if my one listener is polyamorous. <laughs> Who's your one listener? I don't know. I I have more than one listener. I just, is it Molly? Is it <laughs> I don't think my parents have ever listened. Molly, if you're listening, these these were all lies. I'm a good boy. <laughs> I read the Bible every day. <laughs> no, he's lying, Mom. Um, all right. So, uh, I don't know. I can't. Sometimes, like I like in this, I try to really. I've said this, f- like the last four episodes. You feel like it's got to wrap up into a nice little thing, or what? I try. It's not that I try to wrap it up, but I just try to like um, explore it and try to figure out where, like people's like insecurities lie with things, and see if like we can really uncover anything and like the last four episodes i feel like most of the people have like just known what exactly they're feeling and i haven't been able to do anything <laughs> fun with it you want to help me let's go through more of my insecurities i'm trying to be like a faux <laughs> therapist here <laughs> you're not giving me the satisfaction i no, i'm just kidding this was great Cause um because because i'll tell you what i told the therapist the one time i went to therapy uh what are you going to tell me that I don't know about me? <laughs> you said that to a therapist? Yeah. That's the exact r- opposite <laughs> mindset you need to have <laughs> when talking to a therapist. Like, how are you going to know me better than me? <laughs> it was, uh, Pretty easily, apparently. <laughs> that's what they went to school for. No, she didn't. And it scared me, so that's why I didn't go back. <laughs> Wait, she didn't? No, she like... So I said that up top, and then, um, and then I just kind of like rambled for an hour. And then she like... She wrapped up how I w- how I was feeling just like in one sentence, but but I didn't explain to her that way. But like that's how I feel. Like uh, she was like, "Oh, so sometimes, so sometimes you feel like you're more of a robot than a person." And I was like, "Oh fuck, I hate how right you are." <laughs> <laughs> that scared you too much. You couldn't go back. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, that's horrifying. That's a, a good therapist frightened you. <laughs> what would you what were you looking for in that situation? Did you want her to? I wanted to beat her, uh, psychologically. Psychologically, yeah. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a weird goal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fight my therapist. <laughs> That's what I, I thought. I'd pay money and then we fight. That's how I get my aggression. Yeah. Out. Um, shit. I don't know. God, man. I sound like such an idiot. You can trust therapists. I know. I gotta go back. I just gotta get my insurance figured out. Yeah. That was also part of it. Oh. Well, I'm oh. sorry to hear that. I don't know. I think you're fine, Connor. I think you'll find true love one day. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that just reminded me of the story. Uh, so I came here, I came out here to visit like a year ago, and uh, I did this show. And at the time, I was doing a bit about how people get freaked out when I say I've never been in love before. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was, I was working on that bit at that show. And then after the show, this one, I don't think this this woman is a comic. I think she was just a storyteller who told a story on the show because I haven't seen her around since I've been here. But so we just happened to ride the train together um, to the next place I was going. And so we were just talking and just being friendly. And then uh, as we were like parting ways, um, <laughs> uh, uh, like I said, bye. And then she walked across the street and then she like yelled out my name. And she walked back and she was like, Connor. I hope you fall in love one day. <laughs> and I was just like, this is the cheesiest fucking shit ever. <laughs> or maybe she didn't say I hope. She's like, I think you're going to fall in love soon or some shit like that. But I was like, ugh. That's also weird because that's <laughs> like, 
I don't know. That's her putting you in a box. Like, no, everybody has to find love. It's like, no. I was like, why are you just yelling this on the street? Love. That is weird. She could have said that. If she's going to say something that weird, she could say it to you <laughs> privately, face to face. Not but just my screaming first thought was, I was like, oh, do I go talk to her? Like, do I fall in love with her? And then I was like, <laughs> no, that'd be the cheesiest. <laughs> I would never be able to say that story with a straight face. I like the if. The idea that like she could have been the love of your life, but you avoided it just because you didn't want to have a cheesy meeting story. Hey, if that's the case, I stand by it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that works for me. Um, cool. I want to move on to plugs. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess the only thing I have to plug is uh, my whole family's coming to New York uh, October 24th through the 27th. So if you want to come hang out with us, my mom will buy you dinner. <laughs> um so yeah, we'll be the uh, it'll be three tall tall men and a and a short woman. If you see that crew, that's my family. And uh, yeah, come say hi. But shows wise, uh, nothing. Yeah. And then what about like um, your Twitter and whatnot? Uh, don't follow me on Twitter. It's bad. Um, Are you bad on Twitter? Well, I'm just not on there. And when I try, it's bad. Uh, <laughs> so you should follow me on Instagram. I have some fun on there. It's at Connor Delahanty. Um, I goof around on there a bit. But um, and then yeah, polyamorous people send me an email. Um, maybe we can start some sort of dialogue, and you can uh, you can teach me what your experience is like, so I can be more learned and uh, and more open to oh yeah. new experiences. And you have to let me know if anybody actually emails you. Oh, I'll let you know. Not just for my own ego to know. But I won't. I, I won't listed, tell him <laughs> the contents of the email, so it can be private between you and me, folks. Oh man, I'm just curious. <laughs> this turd wants to learn. But I'm not a wait. You're a turd, or I'm a turd. Well, I mean, if we're going to be honest, we're all turds, but yeah, I was only enough. referring to myself. That works. Um, and then, as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Charlie Roar and uh, on Tumblr at hearmeroar.tumblr.com. Uh, both roars are spelled R-O-H-R-E-R and those. Connor, thank you very much for doing my podcast. Thank you, Charlie. Love you, dude. Love you, pal. <laughs> Bye. Bye.